All right. Hi, everybody. It's 9th of May. Um, welcome to the latest Open Source Antibiotics MER Ligase meeting. And I will do the usual thing of sharing um, a uh, the, the nicely put together uh, issue for today's meeting, the new King Smile, very patriotic of, of uh, you, Hang, to put this together, referencing the coronation. <laughs> and let me just share that. It's got lots of familiar things there, and and but that you know again there are some important things that we can focus in on, um, and for some reason I can never find the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Wait one second, sorry. There it is. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, issue number ninety-seven is the one for today, and um, thanks for everybody for posting lots of things at the bottom there, which I'm sure we'll get to. So for reference, there's everything that's currently on the table is here, but up top there are the kind of most important things um, that we should discuss first, um, which are any data from compounds that we hope to be multi-targeting, either from the working enemy collection or the atomized set. Um, then I think we need to talk about some uh, data on Yuhang's uh, redesign, well, derivatives of, of the AZ Mercy inhibitors um, and the implication of those data on what we need to be doing next. And there's been a, a really productive conversation going on between Yuhang and Joe offline about that. Um, and then any other data on those two sides of the project, I, I think, are the, are the key things. Um, and then we can raise um, any other business, I guess. So um, I don't know which way you want to do this. Um, the, the Warwick team, I, I saw you posted some data just before the meeting. Did you want to present something or um, first up just to get us going? Uh, I think first, just get us going to clear up the conundrum about Compound W. OK, uh, it, th there isn't a big problem here. It was me simply mislabeling uh, barcode 10933426664, which is 664 as compound W, it is not compound W. So I I misled, I just thought, oh, that's compound W. We actually have not had uh, uh, the AZ compound four here at all. So all we've ever had is Yuhan's compound W, which is AZ compound four, whatever AZ compound four is Yuhan. Uh, okay, so, so I'll so all you got, uh, so so the first first two curves uh, was from uh, was from compound four then. So all uh, the any, have... we don't we don't have any compound four. Okay, we don't have anything called compound four here. Uh, all we have is your compound W uh, WYH nine. That's all we yeah. have. So so the uh, so all the so about the about the curves about the inhibition data you, you guys presented yeah yeah so here so in in that file uh these four uh these four pictures were actually from this compound w yes am yes. i right or it's uh, it's not from the success four mislabeling on the email and that yes. was it. yeah yeah it was me putting compound in 664 because i thought oh yeah that's the comp that's the, that is the one that you had made not having it all on one file in front of me. So that ah, one, thanks. one missed typo from <laughs> my, 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 totally 100% my fault. Not <laughs> uh, no problem, no problem. Uh, so by the way, uh, so about the, about the deviation, uh, about the data, uh, IC50 of this uh, compound W against uh, Pseudomonas originals and Mercy, uh, I found it was uh, 1.2 micromolar, and uh, according to the literature, it was uh, uh, not a molar scale. I think is that is there is there is there a reason for such a huge deviation? Yeah, uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't see Anita's original data, but it, but because these are type binding inhibitors, uh, the actual IC fifties you measure. It will, if the affinity is high enough, be actually predicated on the actual amount of enzyme that goes into the actual assay. Um, so if you put a really tight binding inhibitor 
which for which the enzyme actually acts like a mop, the IC50 will approach something like half the enzyme concentration in the assay. Now, with some of the, particularly the MERS-C assays we've done, we've had to use fairly high enzyme concentrations to get decent rates that we can measure inhibition against. And so that will notionally have an impact upon the range of IC50s we can go down to. So this was a very early, you know, a very early days discussion as to why when we first did the assays, we're, you know, we're getting micromolar rather than nanomolar data. And that's just that it, we weren't using the paraphosphorylase assay that AZ used, yeah. where they use tiny quantities of enzyme. Um, we had to use more. Yeah. So I don't think it's anything to worry about. Thanks. I mean, certainly on the numbering here, having so many codes for one molecule is suboptimal, obviously. And we're, and we're going to get um, confusion if we're not careful. So we've been using Compound W, but um, the, these codes are Yuhang's internal codes. These AZ compound codes are the ones that they use in the HEMI paper. And the OSA code is the one that we use for the whole project. I think we should, we should try and be consistent about what we're using, um, generally speaking, because we also tend to add in commercial codes as well to, to the mix here. And we've just got to be careful not getting confused. No, I agree. That was that was also a discussion a few months ago about getting yeah. our chemoinformatics unified. Yeah. All right. Um, Yuang, was there anything else you wanted to ask about this issue, or do you think that's resolved? Uh, I think it's uh, resolved. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> Great. Um, and then, uh, so, uh, Adrian, did you? Mentioned something uh, before we came on about the competition compounds. Uh, yes, yes, I did. Do, um, do you have something you want to share there, or? Um, yeah, I've just logged on to Zoom independently, which is where the curious sound effects came from. Right. Um, what I'll do, I'll share my screen if I can. If I can. Just, just for your information, the data was, at least I couldn't see the data in the email you sent. I think you forgot to attach it, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Right. Can you, can you... Right. Yep, that's good. All right. So we got sent uh, last year a variety of compounds that were the basis of a competition that UCL held. Um, in order to generate novel inhibitors of MERD, and we screened them. And we screened them using the fluorescent assay that uh, uh, we've been using thus far. And what became fairly apparent is that on the face of it, a large number of these compounds were actually active. However, when we um, reanalyzed it in more detail and we looked at the coupling enzymes, uh, which we use to detect the product of the MERD reaction. We found that the coupling system, the detection system, was also subject to marked inhibition by um, these compounds. So the, the coupling system we use in our fluorescent assay um, involves three proteins, so purine nucleoside phosphorylase, PMP, xanthine oxidase, and Horstrach peroxidase. And if you like, those are three liabilities with regard to interference. So what uh, I've done is I've carried out the assays again, except we've used a far simpler, but unfortunately rather more expensive in terms of reagents, spectrophotometric assay, and carried out the assays against the same compounds, which, I'll just go to the next slide. Uh, so um, gives a much clearer picture of what's going on. So the central histogram is basically percentage inhibition against compound or DMSO. Um, the labeling I've used, since this is a hot topic, is 1 to 18. And in the table uh, is the uh, relationship between my label and the UCL labels that are being used. Um, the assay is perfectly fine in terms of inhibitor detection because the positive control, which is ADPCP, works well. Um, and essentially, 
we have two candidate compounds, which I've labeled eight and 17, which in your nomenclature is Z16480278 and OSA double zero double one zero. And they both on the face of it give complete inhibition at 0.5 millimolar. Um, I've reassayed those compounds against the coupling system, which now is a lot simpler, is the single enzyme. And it turns out that I'm very confident that OSA double zero trouble one zero is a MERDI inhibitor, which we're going to be taking forward into IC50s. The likelihood is that the other compound, which looks promising, is, but the scatter of the data is rather higher, so I'm a little less confident about that. But anyway, the competition compounds did yield um, a positive result in the end. Very interesting. Um, we uh, need to correlate whether or not the one that's binding there is the one that bound by was was found to bind by SPR, because that was the result that we had previously. That one of them gave something. Um, it would be amazing, of course, if that was the same compound. Yeah, but we will have to do that correlation. Great. I mean, that's very interesting. We um, will. I mean, so ultimately, yes. If if you are able to generate IC50s for maybe both of those, definitely the the one on the right, maybe both. Then we do. I mean, we need to be trying to publish this work because we we had contributions from lots of people, and it'd be great to reward those contributions, given that we've gone and got the compounds and now evaluated them. So I guess we need to just get to a point where we think we've we've identified something that's concrete and useful. Um, uh, so I mean, just bear that in mind that ultimately here it's a it's a it's a th this set of compounds is separate from everything else we're doing, and we can publish it independently. Is <laughs> And my memory fails me uh, as it does these days. Uh, and we have a we do we have a list of those, must have a list of those structures shared yes, available. Yeah, and, and yeah, do, they, do, do they look anything like each other? Or are they complete? We don't know, do they? Not really. Yeah, they're quite diverse. Mm. Um, but we can send that around. It's just a link where we posted the original SPR data that was generated a few months back. Well, you got the SPR table. Uh, I've got the table for the uh, structures as well. Have you got, have you got the SPR table? Does uh, that match? Do you want to share? And I'll stop sharing. Well, I'm looking for it, and then that's <laughs> sure. Ah, okay. We'll we'll um, we'll keep looking to see if there's any SPR correlation um, with that. Yeah, these are recent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Um, there is enemy news, but I've really got to collect the data before I want to present it more properly. But essentially, we've whittled everything down to 18 compounds. Um, how I got there is something I'll let you know once I've compiled everything. But there are 18 compounds now which require one final screen with um, the coupling system, rather like I've done here, um, and IC50s. But there will be more to follow, but if you don't mind, I'll get the data collected first. Great. Yeah. Sounds good. So, okay. so Adrian, just, just, I don't know if you can at least say, when you say there are 18 compounds, that's against one isozyme, or there are several isozymes, or when you say 18, what do you mean by 18? In terms of... Uh, I mean, 18 against pseudomonas originosa at the moment. Oh, just, so a single isozyme. Yeah, and you have and you've tested those against other isozymes or just your D at this point. Um, I'm just, I'm just that's fine. I mean, I know you're. you're I know. I'm just just curious in the, the sense of, you know, how many compound or how many of the isozymes have actually been tested against the full enamine library? Against the full enamine library, um, Strepalagalactei uh, D and E, um, against the hits that the S Allegalactii screen yielded uh, Pseudomonas D and E against the full library um, Pseudomonas Mer D with the intention to go on to do the coli uh, D and E at the moment, anyway. 
So the discussion was whether to just do the IC50s first and then take the best of those and then screen those against the other isozymes or take the hits and screen all the isozymes and then choose those that hit the most isozymes to do the IC50. I mean, we had those yeah. discussions and we decided to do the IC50 first. Yeah. Thoughts? So, right. okay, what was the compound, the, our Warwick ID? Okay, uh, what are the 17, ones? Well, number 17. Let's come back to that. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any more th comments, Joe, on enamine things? Uh, not at this point. I guess it's, you know, they, they've decided how they're going to do it. So I, I, anyway, I, we'll do this offline. I can make some comments offline and get some more clarity. But anyway, just move on. Okay. Do you want to? Uh, update on crystals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've done many rounds to try to get the enamine compounds and doing a lot of soaking experiments with new D and E. I can't find any compounds. Uh, e. coli. New E and D. Uh, I can't find any ligands from the soaking experiments. Uh, but I also did new quark crystallization experiments at different compound concentrations. And I've got a new crystal for E. coli, new D, and the compound D06. Um, and I have optimized it and I'm sending it to Diamond tomorrow. So let's hope. Let's hope the crystal looks different from any other crystals that I've been getting from UD. So I have slightly hopes on that. <laughs> um, yeah, and hopefully, but it's been a lot, uh, yeah, a lot of failure structures. <laughs> so I think the bottom line is that uh, E. coli Mer D doesn't work as a staking system. You put them yeah. in, you get changes, but there's no there's no co-structures. Yeah. You just lost, you know, the, 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 the things start flexing and, and, and the compounds are spat out. Yeah. Basically, whereas say with this 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 the the co-crystallization, we've got a completely different morphology from APO. So the finger crossed actually that it's a, yeah. a co-structure. That was J06 with Mer. What was it? Sorry, Mer D. E. coli Mer D. From E. coli, yeah. All right, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that it goes mm. well. Mm. So yeah. so I think the bottom line is soaking. Soaking seems... not. It's not going well for this enzyme. No. New E, I'm still having issues with reproducibility because of the robot. Um, there are some issues with the robot. And new E crystals are really sensitive to any changes, basically. Um, so they were not good enough um, to do proper soaking on them. Uh, and the new D, yeah, it's not a soakable system. Yeah. But um, I'm a bit hopeful with the core crystals. <laughs> Mm. At least we're getting something new that I never got in before. These crystals I've never gotten before. Mm. But there's a problem with these compounds because I need them at really high concentration for the crystallization uh, conditions. But you cannot go to really high concentrations because they are not that soluble. So it's a balance. But yeah, I'll let you know. Um, usually they give me beam time really early, or as soon as I send it, usually in the same week I get beam time. And let's hope. This is the same case, so I will update you. Fantastic. Okay. Really good. All right. Just on the same subject, then um, we just wanted to update everyone on the compounds that are being made. So, oh, can um, we? Can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just thinking why we were talking about crystallography. I don't know. So, so Bart, I don't know if you had a specific update um, at this point. I was just curious, whatever happened to your colleague at uh, the Oklahoma, I forget. <laughs> yeah, Scott, uh, Scott Lovell at Kansas University. Or Kansas, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just, at one point, we're talking about sending compounds to him for crystal work, and I don't know, what is the status of that? Yeah, Scott's um, working away. I apologize, I don't have a specific update on the, 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 uh, J06 crystallizations. Uh, okay, so he has. I mean, okay, so I just. But okay, he's, that's great. They're, they're so he's, he's received. Com so he's received some of these compounds and he's working on them. Yeah, Laurie sent it to me, and then I sent it to that. 
him. Okay. All right. Great. No, that's great to know. I, I just hadn't heard any kind of an update on that on that okay. end. So, yeah. Because he, he hasn't been on the last couple of calls. And so anyway, thanks a lot. That's great. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it would be very, uh, very useful just to have a couple of lines in an email about about what he's looking at, just so we're all on the same page. If, if you can, I mean, and we can we can share it on the site, but if, if something could be relayed about about what he's got and what he's looking at, that'd be very interesting. OK, because I, I admitted that I've forgotten to what the status of that was. Yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> I can. OK, good, thanks. Um, and then, so yeah, just a quick update on, on compounds that are going to be sent, or, or well, they're yeah, going to be sent pretty pretty soon, I think. So um, these from the from the search of um, commercially available analogs of the compounds which appeared to be giving some multi-targeting behavior, um, these were the compounds that were purchased by Ed. And they're currently sitting in the fridge or freezer in, in our lab at UCL. And we were just waiting um, to check that they could be received and evaluated because these are the ones that are surrounding the compounds that we, we found interesting. These are the most similar compounds. You know, to check that we're not dealing with singletons and everything. Um, so they're, they're ready to go. And we were just waiting for um, a couple of competition compounds. So these are the last two competition compounds that we wanted to make and had managed to get those before he left, which is great. So those are included there, which will uh, complete that set if if those can be evaluated because that, that's all of them. Um, and then uh, the last group that's coming through were ones that were not commercially available. And so these compounds um, are being made by Yi Wei, who's on the call um, and is doing a, a master's project in the lab at the moment. And uh, Eve Carter, who's a postdoc in the lab, who's he was working on something else, but the chemistry is a little quiet at the moment. So she she made a few analogs of AW9 um, just to play around with the structure a little bit. So the red ones are ready to go and the orange ones, I think will be ready by the end of the week. So we can ship all those off probably on Friday um, to mm -hmm. Warwick evaluation. Okay, so that'll be a total of about 40 compounds. Something like that, yeah. Again, these are, you know, the little cloud around the compounds that we found just to sort of see to check that they give something and maybe see if we can see a little bit of SAR, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was one other compound there. So, so that's the AW9 and AW53, and my memory is going to oh, fail me sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. So all these are directed against MERD or specifically? Um, well, no, I mean, I think these are the multi-targeting ones. Oh, sorry, the competition compounds, yes. But these ones were derived from the multi-targeting hits, and and what they hit is up. Yeah. As a reminder, so you will you will have a better sense than I about what they should be evaluated against. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jo6 though was not on here, um, and I promised I wouldn't ask Ed to say anything on the call because he's feeling sick. But there, there was another set of compounds that I think we were thinking about that were around J06, but I've forgotten what that is. Ed, if you don't want to contribute to, to the audio, you can just put a comment on the um, on the GitHub issue about what we were doing about the last set of compounds around J06. I think there was one more. I think I think you can see it in the multi-targeting issue. Oh, okay. uh, I think I started working on it, but didn't manage to finish it. Right. Dude, you do sound sick. Sorry to <laughs> drag you on the call. Um, uh, uh, maybe the top one, top image. Uh, the one on the left, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. So that, that was it, right? What, what was the... I forget what we were planning on doing there. Sorry, can you just remind me? I was trying to remake... J six, right, and we didn't quite finish that. No. Okay. All right. That's where we were at. Trying to resynthesize it. Got it. Because the commercial availability of things similar to J six is pretty low. So that's all that's available, basically. So yeah, it'd be nice to be able to make J six and then be able to vary it if we find the compound interesting. So we we do have a synthetic plan, and Ed started it, but yeah, we can we can look that again. I guess as J six becomes increasingly interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ed. 
Uh, so yeah, those will be winging their way to you pretty soon, hopefully on Friday. That's the idea. Okay. Okay, does anybody else have any questions about the the work enamine collection or, or the atomized compounds and this, the multi-targeting compounds? Are those sets that we have been looking at? Okay, if not, then um, uh, we were then going to move on to some data on uh, Yuhang's variants of um, the uh, AZ compounds. So the uh, the set that was found by AZ a few years ago. Um, and as I think everyone knows, um, don't have the structures right here, but um, structures of this kind were, were of interest in Yuhang was changing this OH to an NH2 to try and improve um, its uh, the compound's ability to accumulate. Those compounds found no um, particularly uh, good potency against wild-type bacteria, um, and we were hoping to get data on whether or not the compounds were inhibiting the enzymes in vitro, just so that we know whether or not the design itself is okay or not. Um, so just to sort of close off that part of the the project and I think some data has been has been coming in um I pasted some that came in through email which was this compound uh, but this was wyh9 which is I think this compound again yeah. right this was Sorry, uh, sent about. as a control compound so right right yeah okay um and then so the question was you know whether or not these compounds of Yuhang sort of the amine derivatives inhibit the enzyme. Um, does anybody want to update us if we have data in that area? I think we need something in there. Yeah, so, so um, you, it'll be a Yuhand you hand table, I think there's somewhere. Yeah. I've seen my file, is that one? Yes. Um, Yuhang, did you have that table of data to hand? The, the table that you've got that summarizes the data yeah. against your compound? Oh, yeah, all my later. all my compounds. Oh, uh, on the wiki page, uh, my like is wiki. Uh, let me share the screen. Microbiology assay. Uh, so all so the the Excel sheet that you had that summarizes all the data against your compounds. Yeah. These ones, can you guys see it? Yeah, a bit. Okay. Right, but but I thought you also had columns which were talking about whether or not you'd got um, IC50 data against specific enzymes. Uh, you know about that? IC50. We, we haven't got any IC50s yet. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I'm just trying to highlight the the things that maybe yeah. we still need. Um, or so yeah. is that so uh, yeah it's it, the data the data were oh, actually it's on the it's on the um previous issue if you want to give me back sharing rights yeah um, so the this guy oh yeah um so i think wait let me just get rid of that um so i think we've got uh the, the issue was that we needed, uh, sorry, forgive me, what is it we're looking for? Um, we need to know, yeah, whether or not these things are um, in the enzymatic assay. It's the enzymatic assay data that we needed and whether or not that was possible. Yeah. We can be sure that changing the alcohol to the amine hasn't messed up the binding. She done this. Anita's uh, on another job at the moment. She's training some folk in the micro lab, which is why she's not here. Otherwise, she'd be able to tell us whether she's done those. Um, okay. Let's um, <clears throat> get all my emails from her. Um, okay. Because um, the next step here is, for, for Yu Heng's PhD is to, is to <clears throat> finish off that little bit of the project. But then if the design is basically OK, then there are other things that he can do <clears throat> um, in, rather than just having a primary amine on a molecule, there are a couple of other things that can be done which are thought to improve accumulation, like pyridinium ions and things like that, which makes sense to look at uh, while he's doing this. 
but but if the compounds don't inhibit the enzymes then we have a bigger problem than accumulation so it's it's important in terms of design for for a few compounds that you hang may or may not make let's go back we'll, we'll yeah. go and check see we'll what, back to you. whether whether anita's okay. done those she has done w h9 yeah she's done that she's done that one where yeah, yeah 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 but that's uh yeah no it's the derivatives we have, need to go and check yeah. okay all right um and then um beyond that um beyond the the tinkering with the compounds um, you Hang and Joe have been corresponding about a more fundamental redesign um, of the molecules based on what we know of how they bind, which has been really productive. Um, we've done this in part because Yu Hang's got a plan ahead, um, and in part because, as we've discussed before, we wanted to try to ask um, CC4 carb for some chemistry inputs. And so we were trying to think about, well, you know, is there a set of molecules that Yu Hang could, could usefully make, which are coherent and self-contained, and then another set of molecules that we could go to CC4 carb uh, with some strong justification to make, um, you know, so more of a structure guided approach. Um, and I guess that they've been talking a lot about this and come up with some really good ideas. And and we don't really have time to go through them all now. But um, you hang, did you want to did you want to summarize the the basic conclusions yeah, from sure. that? Uh, I, can, I can share the one slide for you if you want. Yeah. If I see it. Yeah. Uh, which one am I sharing? Yeah, that's the, it's the PowerPoint redesign of the series. Oh, sorry, is that, is that too small? No, they look relevant. Yeah, this is a bigger one. Yeah, that's fine. So, oh, it's gone again. It's so tantalizing, you know? Yeah, a little bit. Sure. You guys see it now? Yeah. Uh, it's a bit small. Zooming. So this is the this is a basic design uh, we've done with Joe. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically we are we are focusing on modifying this structure of the AZ5 and I5. We have several plans uh, where we decided to cut this big, uh, cut this big roof off because it has the potential uh, risk of uh, clashing, sterical clashing with the, uh, with the C terminus. Uh, and so then we decided to uh, add more, add a bit more flavor to these two uh, positions. Uh, uh, because it can potentially bind to the uh, helix residues, which are uh, prevalent uh, among the four uh, uh, sorry, which are prevalent among the four uh, uh families. So uh, that's what we are trying to do. Uh, and according uh, and based on this uh, design rationale, uh, I decided to pick up this pyramidal pyramiding core still. And the other one, uh, and the other one is the pyridine, uh, pyridine aiming as a core for my next stage of PhD. Uh, this is just basically the scaffold, uh, sorry, the scaffold hopping. Uh, the other three cores I've designed uh, was uh, was for the CC4 carb. And uh, one one thing worth mentioning here is uh, you can see this uh, methyl aiming group here or the uh, acetyl group here. These two groups are pretty much, uh, uh, these two groups are pretty much uh, designed uh, or designed here because the, uh, we're expecting to have extra interactions in the, in the pocket. Uh, and uh, then we, uh, then we, uh, then I decided to do a little bit of a uh, bioisosterior a replacement uh, on either position one or position two, uh, just to make sure uh, that uh, these pockets have been explored. So to know the details of the design, uh, so I basically did the constraint uh, constraint docking, 
using this structure uh, with the uh, oxaloading. Oxa yeah, it was just random thoughts. I, I thought this one could be uh, could be long enough and uh, asked ADP and uh, could potentially reach that beta helix. Uh, sorry, sorry, not the, the, the helix residues. And uh, uh, luckily, I found okay uh, these these uh, this uh, carbonyl group was ha actually having the interactions with the uh, with the residues uh, where we would like to target on. Uh, and therefore, I decided, okay, uh, I cut this big big stuff off because it's basically doing nothing. Uh, and then add a little bit more flavor on it, on it, like uh, adding a carbonyl or something else, whatever. But uh, it also has the interactions. So based on this, we decided to. So I did. Uh, I did a whole. You, you hang. Sorry, one sec. Just one sec. Can you just go back a slide? So just to yeah. to um, uh, take a step back in terms of the the, the change to the structure here for for yeah. the biologists amongst us, the chemistry, the bit, the big difference here about where the molecule is being varied is that in the structure on the top right. The kind of red NH2 is what um, Yuhang has so far been experimenting with to try and change that into a group that would still bind but would improve accumulation. And the key insight that, that Joe came along with was that, well, if you look at the structures, then growing the top right of the structure up to meet other parts of the protein, um, as shown on the left. Uh, would be would be really quite productive in the sense that there nothing much has been done there. You know the previous structures that we've had have had a hydrocarbon group there basically, which isn't really making um, many useful interactions with the protein. So so that's the real difference here. It's a, it's a different part of the molecule that is being uh, grown. Uh, you know speculatively to try and pick up new interactions, but it makes sense based on the protein structures. Yes. Just uh, just following up on that, Matt. Then how does that relate to the kind of intrinsic mobility of the protein and where 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 the extended molecule is going? Is it going into a more stable place or going into something that you could think of as a hinge region? I'm trying to spot that from here. Yeah. So I mean, Joe, Joe has a, a better sense of that than I did. Joe, did you want to talk about this, or or we can attempt to summarize all the conversations we have? Uh, so I think the the main yeah so if you look at the structure the I guess this what do you have here you have a oxazolidone it looks like um, there in the upper right so yeah. this is all this is I mean you don't have I guess a good ex overlay with ATP but this is where the phosphates of ATP so these compounds are much more staying in the same shape as ATP or ADP uh, that's what we're trying to most for the most part trying to keep these inhibitors in the same, occupying the same space as substrate. So these are not going, so in theory, in theory, <laughs> these should be, you know, uh, less susceptible, for example, to the C-terminal uh, domain, uh, because they're basically occupying the same space as ADP, ATP. Good, thanks. And yeah, I think talking about these. Yeah, Karen, sorry. Oh, uh, no, no, no. So, so based on these, uh, these ideas, so we design a whole list of what I would like to make. Uh, this is cluster one, which is the, uh, which is the first, which is the uh, position one being explored because the position one is a relatively uh, facing toward the internal side. So uh, the space we could do modifications a bit smaller. So we don't want to stuff uh, stuff it uh, a really big uh, a really big group into it. So I kind of make it a little bit smaller uh, and varying different cores. Uh, those ones are relatively difficult to make or for C4 graph. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah. And the uh, class of two is basically the same idea. These are uh, these are the variations we want to explore for uh, for my project and uh, for c 4 calf we have even more uh, on the position two. Uh, if you guys want to look, uh, so I can zoom in. No, that's all good. I think, I mean, the, the, the point here is really that it, we wanted to give something self-contained yeah. and different for cc 4 carb with a strong justification. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, you know, the, the, the general outline of, of the structure and then and then we will propose, you know, 
10 compounds or something yeah. that we think are accessible and then go with them, uh, go to them with that proposal, making it clear that the compounds are different from the one that Yuhang's already making. So that there's, yeah. there's a line between them. Yeah, the clear line between the cores and yeah. Yeah, just so you know, I mean, in the CC4 carb thing, I mean, they, they're basically, you will go through a whole review process. They will have their own inputs. So I think, you know, you give them some exemplars, but there's going to be a whole new, more likely, you know, additional design and input into whatever kind of library we get made. Yeah, I was hoping sure. for that. Actually. I was yeah, hoping yeah, it'd be that, a no, no, that, yeah, anyway, yeah. So I, I wouldn't get, you know, I wouldn't get uh, too worried about, you know, having, you know, a big full, you know, expanded set because they're going to probably uh, have their own input and thoughts on how how to go things. So, okay, right. it's more of the concept. Yeah. All right. So it's on us to sketch that up and then approach them with it. That's the next step. There. Cool. If we want to go right. back to Yuhan compounds, we've we've mailed out. Several to several people, including you, and uh, the fact that we've actually tested uh, WH6, 9, 15, 17, 22, and 25 against a range of ISO designs for inhibition. So I think Yuan's nodding, he's got those. So uh, that's Pseudomonas Mio C, E. coli Mio D, Pseudomonas Mio E, E. coli Mio E, and Pseudomonas Mio F. So we've got we've got that data for one for one millimolar. So we've got percent, percent inhibition data for, for that matrix of uh, five by six. So there's 30 data sets there. That's great. Thank you, Will. Yeah, Will we're just waiting. This, this waiting. We're waiting for the IC50s there, Chris. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. You've yeah, had it for a while. Take... You've had it for a while. Yeah, I'm just saying that we have done the innovation stuff. So that's, we know which ones to, to go for. If you want to come, Joe, and uh, spend a, a month or two doing some IC50s with us, you'd be very welcome. Uh, Sure, no problem. <laughs> Need to crash on your floor, Chris. I've got I've got some cushions in my office here ready for you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um that's good. Those are the, the most important things, I think, from my perspective. Um, anybody else want to raise anything? Concerning about the um, uh, SPR data. So, about the SPR data and the competition compounds, there is not a great correlation between the essays and the SPR data. So, for the compound that was the best one on the yeah. essays, uh, I couldn't calculate a KD. Um, it was just showing me a KD greater than 500 macromolar. Um, but again, the systems are completely different. I'm not, I don't have any compound, any substrates or ATP or things like that on the SPR essay is apoprotein. Mm. So, so all that can be making a massive difference. Yeah. So the a APO SPR does not correlate with the biochemistry. No. Although right. if you look at the biochemistry in more detail, the kinetics, it may do eventually in that we might be able to rationalize why the difference is there. Mm -hmm. And it might just be down to order of binding and things like this. Um, and you don't, so the, yeah, the, the SPR is necessarily on APO, right? There's. Yeah, because it would be, I don't know how we are going to uh, make so much substrate uh, to be able to do uh, one with the substrate uh, because the running buffer, you use a lot of buffer and you will need this compound in the running buffer. If we had a different SPI instrument, it would be a different story, but what we can access at the moment we will need a lot of volume, which means a lot of milligrams or grams of the substrate. And we can't supply that. Right. Right. Yeah, that's the limitation at the moment. So 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 the bottom line is S, 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 SPR with APO protein is not worth no. doing. Mm -hmm. A good one for one compound or two, maybe with the um, in the in process of the substrate, but it, it, you know. We have to make sure that's the compound that we want to work on. Yeah, it's not a screen. Not a screen. No, it's, it's not, not a screen in screen. It's not for screen. No. So, pardon my ignorance here. So, what's the substrate? <clears throat> well, which which are the? Yeah. 
So, so, <clears throat> so these are all meant. So these are all meant to be a ATP competitive. So, why can't you use a simpler ATP analog? Yeah, you can also use an ATP analog, but again, it's one liter of buffer at least. To run a screen is at least one liter, one liter for two days. If I spend the whole week, is six, eight. Are you talking about the, you're talking about the protein? I'm talking about the buffer that goes into the instrument, and the buffer has to have any substrate that we want to put in, uh, either a ADPCP or the substrate. ADPCP is also very expensive for this kind of experiment, right? We're talking about liters of buffer, many. <laughs> Passing across the chip. Second, you mean the passing is... across the chip, right? So it's a continuous. Yeah, water. Yes, because it has to do a lot of washes. It does um, substrate reference obstructions at every single point. Yeah, it uses a lot of buffer. Well, again, the buffer. Okay, so sorry, I'm, I'm being really, I'm just stupid here. So when you're saying the buffer, you're talking about that. At that point, you're actually how much protein, how much of your ligase you actually need. Right. Nothing. No. Nothing. So the the mirror is not the limited step in this case. It would be if we want to do the screening on SPR uh, in the presence of any of the substrate or cofactors, um, that would be the limiting factor, the substrate or the cofactor. The protein, we don't need much protein. So 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 ADP is a very expensive to, to buy ADP. It doesn't bind well for the SPR. I tried different uh, molecules. It has to be ADPCP. Okay. Does it, the... it doesn't give signal. It's not binding well. It's funny. I was wondering if you could, if it binds temporarily. So if you if you have the protein on the on the chip and then you wash over ADP. Does it, do you see the binding on the SPR? No, that's the problem that I didn't see binding. I what you do with the non hydrolyzable analog? Yeah, so it will have to be, uh, and from ADPCP and AMPNP, um, PCP was the best one. And when it and when it binds that, does that stay on or does it wash off quickly? It will wash off, but if it's constantly there, that, that's the point of putting in the buffer that they will always constantly be there. So you always have the same conformation of the protein. Right. So you, you can't you can't add it in. And then you compete but, here against whatever is in there. But at least it's in the conformation that will bind the compound. That's what I think is lacking for the SBR right now in the APO structure, that the conformation is not ideal for the compounds to bind because the pocket is not properly formed. Right. I just wonder if you can add it in and then in the time it takes for it to wash off, try and do the assay at that point, but rather than having it dissolved in the buffer, but is that, is that naive? So you, you know, you. No, you it's very difficult. Right. Then you've got a buffer exchange as well that generates a signal as well in the SPR. So it's, it would right. be very difficult to discriminate between compound and uh, the changes in the buffer. Mm. And then if you want the UDP substrate in there as well, then that, that just becomes. Well, yes, more, even more, yeah. More All right, thanks, thanks, Laura, for clearing up, for helping me out there. Thank you. No problem. So, yeah, so that was quite, quite a lot of work to sort all of that out, quite a lot of cost, actually. Um, yeah. So we know what not to do now. If we were going to start again, there's a whole lot of things we would not do. We'd save ourselves probably 18 months of time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, relying on one assay is always is always true. We always got to do two, right? And it sounds like if you're getting an IC50, that, that that's the way to go. Yeah, exactly. I think the assays for now, there we seem to be picking up some inhibitors as well. Yeah, um, which is good. So, and I mean, I guess there are other things we can do as well. We can, um, if we get lucky, in the protein fluorescence changes with compounding of some of these things. That might be a workaround towards getting a equivalent data. Um, but that but that's something that we'll have to think about and try and work out. Anyway, we can for the compounds we're getting in now, we've got an assay that is sufficiently throughput and yeah. robust enough now for us to trust the data first time. So yeah.
um, we can do that. So the 40 or 50 compounds to come through should be straightforward. Just the date of the third time. Third time. <laughs> I was seeing the first time was, of course, always interesting. Yeah. Right, great, great. Thanks. That's very useful. Um, anything else before we go? I think we'll we'll park the discussion of the um, predicted compounds from Jan Jensen, Yuhang, because I know you're working on those, but we can wait until he's at the meeting and, and until you finish the first batch. All right. If there's nothing else, then we can call it a day. Thanks very much for coming along. Um, anything else you want to add, just please put it on the GitHub issue, obviously, as usual.